Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. And on November 9th, CIG had a Cargo Refactor AMA hosted by Jake Acapella and featuring lead designer Dan Griffith. This presumably completed an odd cycle of updating us about the Cargo Refactor and ISC, where they created a video, then created a postscript added to the video, which appeared to completely invalidate a large portion of what came before it in the video, but only, in fact, invalidated part of it. Then Spectrum and other creators gave a collective what? followed by Spectrum posts and content creators trying their best to make sense of it, resulting in a Q&A, which most of the deficiencies of the original video were addressed, new questions created, and something weird attached that, in fact, had nothing to do with the cargo refactor. And this is not an unfamiliar path for communications on features from CIG. So I'm going to first go over the answers in the Q&A that had to do with the cargo refactor and give thoughts and analysis on them, and then take a moment to discuss how CIG can do this situation better going forward, and then turn to the one answer that didn't really have to do with the cargo refactor. So first answer, which had to do with ships in external resource pods in our mining ships and presumably also the fuel tanks on the Starfarer, and also external cargo ships like the Raft and the Hull series. Track this down with several teams. Currently, all the ships will function similarly to how they do now once 318 comes live. Resource pods such as saddlebags or fuel pods won't be detachable in this release as further work on the vehicle tractor beams is required. Regarding external cargoes such as the hull series and raft, these will detach upon vehicle destruction as outlined in the ISC episode. Thank you, Jake, for bird-dogging it. So at least temporarily, the resource pods are superior in that they never loop piñata away. But, and this is not completely clear, external cargo may be decidedly inferior because the way they are describing it, it seems like it always loop piñatas away, even in cases where internal cargo would remain internal. I know that isn't what they exactly said, but if it was actually not different than internal cargo, they would have simply said not different than internal cargo. And they have been saying for some time that internal cargo would be more secure from loss, and this is in keeping with that. So, we hinted about this in the ISC, but it wasn't very clear. In 318, we are introducing the concept of soft debt. There is a 70% chance of a vehicle will die with its interior and cargo intact from combat deaths. Explosive deaths or deaths by game rules, near a barrier touching water, for example, won't trigger a soft death. What this means, 70% of the time you and your crew are still alive and the cargo is still attached to the ship when a combat death occurs. Ship reaches zero health in combat. The 30% of the time that this doesn't happen, your ship explodes and the cargo is pushed out, and then 0 to 90% of that cargo remains, with the average of that being 45% cargo surviving. Yeah, they were certainly right about it not being clear, so let's break this down into three categories, and I will be using the two terms I have previously coined, boom then dead and boom then wrecked, because they are clearer than soft and hard deaths. Frankly, all the content creators acting like soft death is some sort of a big reveal aren't subscribers to this channel because I talked about boom then wrecked, exactly the same thing, several weeks ago. So the three categories. First you have what they call game rules, which essentially means that your ship is in a place where the ship cannot exist and therefore it must be destroyed by the game. And since the ship can't exist, neither could the wrecked version of the ship, and so it is 100% boom then dead. Now they suggest that 0 to 90% of the cargo will be piñated away, but I suspect that there will be situations where not only the ship can't exist, but neither can the cargo exist. Um, surface of the sun stuff. Now implied in this is that if the wreck can't exist, then there will be no salvage, no towing, no repair, etc., at least in most cases. The second is what they called combat defeat, defining as having your ship reach zero health. That should be your first clue that they aren't talking about the permanent solution, but an interim solution about this. Why? Because ship health points is not the final solution, which will be armor and component damage. Anyway, on zero health, there will be a 30% chance of boom then dead, with the average of 45% of the cargo ejected into space, like a loop pinata, and then a 70% chance of boom then wrecked, 
with a still on our ship and still with the cargo in our ship, presuming based on the first question, we are talking about internal cargo, not external. Now, I am hoping that the 70-30 split is just a number for NPC ships and a placeholder for us until component damage is in the game. Eventually, I'm expecting from what they are showing about damage control that there will be a situation that will happen in combat. Say, a fire breaks out, and if the fire is not controlled before it reaches the oxygen tanks, then boom, then dead, the 30% chance. So I'm expecting that the 70-30 split will be temporary until we can be something that our actions can have control over, including self-destruct. Next, containers are snapped to the grid when they are placed in the ship. Anything in the ship or attached to the grid will be able to be sold at the commodity kiosk. Now, this is what I really would have liked to have seen demonstrated during the ISC video. Do we have a choice to turn it on and off when snapping and we place a container like we used to with boxes? Is there a way to visualize the cargo grid when we are parking bikes, buggies, and rovers on the ship? Does the snapping also work when we're stacking cargo boxes? CIG further clarified, presumably as the interim solution, Buying cargo works just as it does now. You purchase from a kiosk, the cargo is loaded on the ship automatically and attached to the grid. Once outside of an armistice zone, you are free to move it about and snap it to the grid with a tractor beam however you wish. Again, this would have been great if they could have shown it in the video. Further clarification on the loose items, you would have a hard time making it fit, but sure, the cargo grid has a max capacity. Anything else is referred to as loose items, and if they are on the ship, you can sell them. This is not to be confused with FPS items such as guns, ammunition, stim, armor, etc. Those are technically in a third inventory in your ship, although I have planned for that stuff too. But I saw a question that asked specifically about these, and I will try to answer that part there. You might have trouble making it fit on some ships, but most of our ships have a lot of space that can be used for these loose items. For example, in the Hercules, there's this quite large area between the front and rear grids. Not only that, but that area is easily accessible from the lift, which is large enough to carry 1SCU boxes. Next, commodity prices will not change for 3.18, mainly because if we did now, we would have to add it all over again as soon as we add manual loading and unloading to the loop. Loading and unloading will dramatically change the whole commodity trading loop. This was as expected from my viewpoint. When a player purchases commodities, they are owned by the player that purchases them. Anyone else trying to sell them will have a no questions asked terminal and they will not receive full price for anything that they are trying to sell. Even if I give cargo to a friend, they would have to sell it at an NQA terminal and they would not get full price for the commodity. Grimex, for example, would be a location I could fence my stolen goods. This is one of those things that seems very restrictive, but when you loosen it up, it creates all sorts of opportunities for exploits allowing you to be able to sell stolen goods for full rather than fenced prices. But it also means that desired transport for hire has to be sold at NQA terminals for far lower prices. What I might suggest is to have it be possible that the cargo can be sold at a regular terminal, but when sold at a regular terminal, the proceeds go to the registered owner of the goods and not the person at the terminal, who would be regarded simply as a sales agent for the owner. Cargo containers can be scanned and AR markers will be present if they survive the explosion. We can also have color tints to the container so they can at least identify what category they belong to, such as metals or processed goods. Again, this would have been great to see or at least covered in the original video. Larger than one SCU containers are still planned, but at the moment everything is still bought and sold as one SCU containers. Actually, they are bought and sold in hundreds of SCU quantities, but only physicalized as one SCU boxes one of which is usually actually only partly full. I presume that is what will be continuing. The only new addition I can think of is RMC, which is what you get from hull scraping. These can be sold at commodity kiosks. Okay, we were already expecting that one. At the moment, nothing changes with loading and unloading. This is handled automatically as it has been in the past. Once manual loading and unloading becomes a reality, you will have to option to choose between the two. If you choose to have the location do the loading and unloading, there will be a cost and a time where your ship is unavailable while the process completes. 
much like the current refinery gameplay. Actually, it's not like refining. In refining, my empty prospector is immediately available for me to take out and do more mining, while the ore is what is no longer available. What he is saying is that during the future automated loading, my ship will be the equivalent of a stored state, but with the countdown timer kind of like with an insurance claim, and who knows, perhaps even an expedite option. What I am glad for that is because otherwise they would have to be able to show the entire loading process, which would have been a huge task with little gameplay benefit. And that is it for the part of the AMA that actually had to do with the cargo refactor. And I am pleased with the actual content, but why did it have to take such a route to finally get here, to know what we wanted to know at the start but still haven't seen demonstrated? Is there something that they can do better about the process? I'm sure that they are internally within CIG showing around ISC and other marketing materials before release. The problem is that when you already know the answers, it is hard to realize the questions that those who don't know the answers will have. Your brain fills in the missing details unconsciously. So have a regular review panel, kind of like Eva Cotti for marketing communications, and ask them simple questions about your early draft of the video, such, is it clear? Was anything confusing? What other questions do you have that were left unanswered? And then there was the one item from the AMA that really wasn't about the cargo refactor, and that was this. After 3.18, we want to separate commodity trading and cargo hauling. Commodity trading will be a high risk, high reward. If you invest a large amount of your money, you will have to manage the cost of loading and unloading, as well as protection. On the other hand, cargo hauling is just moving things for NPCs from point A to B. You are not tied to it financially, and it will just be moving things that pirates don't care about. There will be no profit in it for them. The first step here is we'll be adding cargo hauling missions that extend the current box delivery missions once you can manually load and unload your cargo. They will start small and get larger, and the only thing that players are risking is reputation. And literally, I can make a whole video about just the implications of this type of mission. And so, since this video is already running long, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And now for an update on our giveaways. First, there's the piloting contest with a video of the best landing of a ship Hercules size or larger that is running until 3.18, with the winner getting their choice of the Crusader Spirit Ships. See the video referenced in the description for all the details on that. And then there's the Grow the Channel ship giveaway. We've met our membership goal and are at 94.5% of the subscriber goal, or the IAE Expo, whichever comes first, which since the IAE Expo is next week is probably going to be that, to give some lucky player their choice of the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey, the long length look ahead launcher lorry. Now to be clear, there will be another big ship giveaway after this only, it's just that I won't decide what the prize will be until of course I can see what might be new at the Expo. Hint, hint galaxy. One entry per video, members are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication date of the winning video and at the drawing date, they will win both of the ships. From non-members, just be a subscriber and comment, somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is either of the two CIG employees responsible for the AMA. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.